times that 1240. Oh my god. Alright. <clears throat> got a little canvas here. Boop, boop. It's probably, I don't know, what was that six by eight maybe? And I really, I don't know, I've got a bunch of ideas. I might just do uh, top view. Boop. I can zoom in. I don't know. Let me just uh, stall for a minute. I've got two brushes picked out. I've got a big one, well, big one to do a wash on. And I've got this little one I like to use to draw the whatever it is it's going to be. Got more ready to go. I got uh, some water with palm juice. I got, I've had one coffee, and this is two coffees here. What else we got? We got some fresh water. I put a little bit of colors on. I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I just, I start, I just put the colors on and that becomes the, the palette. So it's very unconscious, you know, like sometimes it's, no, that's, sometimes it's deliberate, but this time I just, I, I grab some colors that I just, fuck it, right? Now, this one's so small. It's a little guy. Just a little wee one. Look how tiny it is. And I'm only doing it just because I think this is like, I only have one more canvas left <clears throat> before I have to go buy more, and it's a little bit bigger. And I kind of enjoy this sitting down experience. It's, uh, it's way more... It's more comfortable, obviously. Um, <coughs> so I just don't know what this is going to be. I think what I'll do is I'll just start by putting some a wash down. Oh, what the hell? It's stiff as hell. Why is it so stiff? Maybe I didn't. Okay, that's not good. I can. You can't see this, but I can feel it. It just doesn't feel soft. I guess I just didn't need. Wash one off. All right. They're stiff too. What the hell is it? All these are stiff. Okay, that one's good. These two are good. Oh, these are nice and soft. All right. Okay. So this one's nice and soft. And so is this one. <coughs> I guess, uh, yeah. Hmm. Anyhow, okay. So let's just. Let's do this and think about what it could be. One thought is, here, I've got a small picture. I've got this little one. You can see it's better. Wait, no. I was using this as a, as a reference for uh, doing that painting called Help, uh, Protecting Her. And this is, and I just like the, I like the light on her hand and the, and this, and the position was right. I made her nude. I didn't, <clears throat> I uh, got rid of the, the uh, clothing. Like this sweater, obviously, because it looks like a some sort of fashion shoot sort of thing. It looks too contrived. So I was thinking about maybe <clears throat> her being the focal point and putting her in, in a Algonquin Park landscape, or, or just sort of imaginary landscape. In fact, okay, so I didn't sleep last night, basically. I didn't fall asleep till almost 5. It feels like 9 a.m., but it's quarter to 1. <clears throat> um, and anyhow, in my restlessness... I have I had an idea, kind of solidified some one of my ideas, which is to put, um, and I, I started this already. Put people, yeah, put mostly people in Algonquin Park settings that are kind of a, a juxtaposition. So I started that by putting the woman wearing a burka in a canoe. I did that with them with Terry Crews in the water. But I was thinking, and I have a whole bunch, oh, the, the Asylum Seeker is like, some of the Asylum Seekers has a suitcase and he's walking into like, you know, this total nature scene. And um, I, I just like the juxtaposition and there's all kinds of like, you know, maybe it's kind of subtle, like <clears throat> political undertones that you can interpret one way or another. <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, this is funny. If you go to Instagram and Facebook, holy shit, it's embarrassing how much people are 
using themselves like they're good looking and they have all these like perfect kind of photo shots of themselves next to their artwork and and it's embarrassing to me because it's like it's like you know i've always believed what's inside is what matters and the outside doesn't matter <clears throat> so i'm going the exact opposite direction of this insane kind of like i think it's insane where narcissistic where it's all about how you look and he's perfect i'm gonna blow my nose fuck it fuck it and i'm gonna I'm, i don't give a shit about what i'm wearing this is the way i've actually always been i've always been this way i had to wear a suit in high school from grade 7 to 13 and i vowed i'd never like i would make it my mission not ever have to wear like formal clothes so like i had a best friend who got married and I didn't have a suit. I don't think I wore a suit for like a decade. So I had to go buy a suit just for his wedding. And uh, yeah, so that's my that's that's my marketing strategy. It's, it's called the fuck it strategy, which is I'm not going to doll myself up. Uh, not that I, <laughs> I could anyhow, but you know what I'm saying? Like you go on Instagram and, and uh, you look at, you know, I start trying to follow different artists and check out what people are doing and... and, and the worst ones, uh, there seem to be like women who are like, I don't know, their early 20s. And it's just pictures of them. And then once in a while they have a picture. Like it's embarrassing when they put themselves right next to their painting. And it's like, oh, I mean, that's fine. You'll attract certain people for that. But, oh, man, whatever happened to what's inside that counts, you know? Maybe I'm just a curmudgeon. I think that's it. I just like being grumpy. I remember when I was a kid. See, I like it. Look, I splashed some stuff in my eye. It just feels more real and genuine. That's why. All right. <clears throat> I like. I like. <clears throat> I love being a guy. So just, yeah. Okay. So am I gonna do this woman? <clears throat> in, oh, you don't look at look at me, damn it. Why did I even switch? Okay. <sighs> am I gonna do the woman? In the gonk part, or maybe I'll just do a. Well, I can even even see like a little a, a figure here. I could do it this way. Nah. Yeah, kind of like what I was thinking was. Yeah, there's like a, a figure. Okay, whatever. And then I was gonna do. Ooh, maybe I'll do one of those with the trees and stuff. Yeah. Right. So like, do I want the horizon line here? Yeah, I, I'm going to do that. That's kind of cool. <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> not really. Not really. Excuse me. So there's somebody here. All right. And then. Okay. Uh, that is why I like watching you. You're real. Goddamn right I am. Oh, doesn't make me uh, rich, though. That's the goal. That's the goal we should focus on is making some money. So I'm not broke. Uh, if you're not terrified half the time, I don't think you can do good art. All right. So let's see. There's a person here. What are they? What's their form? Maybe that's the, the idea. Is they're not. They can't see the form. <clears throat> now, normally when you do a wash, you should wait a while till till it. Yeah, I know, Nugget. Nuggets. Oh, oh my god, she's so cute. You are so cute, Nugget. Yes, you are. Alright, let's just look at Nugget for a minute. I'm gonna zoom out here. My hands are are, are still uh Hey baby. Hi baby. How are ya? How are you? See my hands too? Let me make sure. I just wanna get a paint. Paint on this little girl. Come here, up up, up up. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. You're so good. Look at look how cute this girl is. Oh, you're so cute. Abba, come over here. Wait a second. Nugget. Come here. Come here. Abba. Abba. Hello, baby. Oh, you're so cute. You are so cute. Yes, you are. This is what I like. I love this dog. Look at this dog. He's a frozen. I love you. Oh, I love you. You want to lick my chin? Mwah. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, you want to look at my? She's looking my shirt. I can't really see it. Okay. Where's your monkey? Bring your monkey here. Yeah, bring up your destroyed monkey. Bring it over here. Good girl. Are oh, you bringing both? That'll be a first. Come here. Come on, Snorty. Come on. Bring it. Bring it over here. You, she doesn't know that there's like eight chew toys stuff. She's got, you can run out of the football? Okay, bring it over here. Put it in my hand. Come on, bring it over here. Oh, she's just, she's doing her little proud dance. She's, she's got like a whole bunch of things just. All right, fuck it. Okay, how do I zoom out of this stupid thing? Oh yeah, here. No, 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 no. Boop. All right. Yeah, she's awesome. All right, okay, I'm just being distracted. All right. Watch this take form. Watch this. Ready? <laughs> Our sound effects before you would come in here. <laughs> oh, see, this is why I need to let it dry. Son of a gun. Yeah, so this problem... <clears throat> Uh, well, it's already being absorbed up here a little bit. Here, check this out. Where should I put this? Bloop, 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 bloop. I can see the, the wetness in the canvas. Let's see if I can <clears throat> put it at an angle where you can see the wetness. Maybe there. you got to see some shine. So right there where I put it, <clears throat> look at what happened. Because it was wet, <clears throat> see the white outline around the blue? That's just the effect of the water on the paint. Like, if that was turpentine, it would probably do the same thing. Over, and that's because that bit of the canvas is still a little wet. Over here, I could apply it directly, and that's the effect I want, right? Right? That's what I want. So, right here, I can see shine. So, here, all along here, needs just a, a minute or two. Come on, you son of a bitch. Dry. Okay, well, that'll all have to do. I'll have to like paint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, she's in her bone. I'll have to paint in spaces where it's dry, just because I'm so goddamn impatient sometimes. Crunch, crunch, crunch. All right. <laughs> all right. So let's uh. There are some really talented people, but there's also a lot of people who I think cheat. <clears throat> nah, I'm not going to get into it. All right. <clears throat> let me let me do another. Babbling on, babbling on. Okay. Let's blow your nose. <laughs> either allergies or some weird sinus thing. Oh, that's the wrong place. Look at this. Look at this cute little canvas. It's still wet. I can see it. I can feel it. Gosh darn it. What should I do in the foreground? <clears throat> what do you think about graphing a drawing? I think it's sort of yeah, oh, you mean the lines? Yes, that's one of my huge pet peeves. If someone takes a photograph and they draw squares on it, they just go on squares in the canvas, and all they're doing is they're looking at the square, and they're saying, okay, what fits in that, what's the composition to match it? And I absolutely feel it's cheating. Oh, oh but, but it makes my skin crawl, to be honest. Like, it's like, why not just take a photograph and put it on the, like, on the canvas? That's, I, I, thought, I, guess I thought about doing that a bunch of times. In fact, oh, I did do this. I took, a, I took photographs of Trudeau's eyes, I printed them out, different zoomed in, and then I got this this, this paint material that <clears throat> I thought what it would do would melt the paper and then the image would be left on the canvas and I was going to paint the canvas specifically because of that. And then, then I said, fuck it, I just left the, the paper on the canvas and I have it upstairs and I was going to go and finish it. But yeah, yeah, it's like, I think it's okay to do it, but don't try to hide it. That's what I meant by cheating. I was looking at one artist who I've been following who does really good stuff, but then I realized all he's doing is he's, a lot of the, the best parts of his painting are just photographs, and he's let them come through, but he's made it look like it was his original painting, and I'm like, oh man, that makes me angry. 
like at least be on, like at least be honest about it. Like say I'm literally taking a photograph and putting it down. I'm not trying to try to hide it. Um, and that's why I have a lot of trouble with digital art because it's very like I am absolutely an expert in digital art. I've been using Photoshop since the very first version came out, <clears throat> R1. So since 1993, about around there. I mean, that's that's one of the things I've professionally I've been in my main focus is artwork on the screen. So I know in a second when something when someone uses a photograph to manipulate and paint over. And that's one guy. All he does is he takes photographs, then he uses a smudge tool and he swirls stuff around. And if at, when you look at it at a distance, it looks kind of cool. Then you realize that literally took man less than a minute to do. And people are like, "Oh my god, it's so beautiful!" Wow. And I'm like, "Oh Jesus, it makes me want to punch the screen." I don't know. There's a part of it is a little bit, to be honest, a little jealousy that people can get away with it. Like imagine making a living by doing that. It's like, where's the effort? I don't know. That's something about modern art to some degree that bothers me is that like, where's the effort? Like, I don't know. I kind of, that's why I feel guilty about doing a lot of abstract paintings because, or even like recently there was a painting I, I started working on. People are like, oh, I believe it that way it is. And I love like this part right now is my favorite part of the process because I'm just being creative and having fun. But uh, yeah, I've got this weird sense of guilt that you know you're not you can't you're not good enough unless you each painting has to have some sort of uh, not suffering but like proof proof. I don't know. It's just some weird hang up I have, and no one can tell me otherwise. In fact, I've been. I started doing this thing where I was going to show a picture of the the polished painting I did here. here. This is what I, I, I probably might still do it. Where um, I don't let me show, slip, switch to the top view. Okay, so this. Can you see that? Yeah. That one. Now, okay. What I was thinking of doing is I actually started doing so. I had a, I've got a photograph of uh, or, or an image of this one, an image of this one, and I, I'm, I'm gonna put like in white letters polished and then raw, and say what you know what do you prefer? I was just curious, and then I know people you know what people are gonna do is like oh just do what you think you're the artist and I'm like oh fuck I know that I don't, you know go fuck yourself oh. Like I, and that's why I haven't posted that because I don't need that. I don't need that shit. I don't need to be, like, I don't need uh, that kind of like you know, just be yourself. Like no fucking shit, man. I'm like I'm the most stubborn person you're gonna meet. I'm not gonna do anything anybody tells me. <laughs> you got me wrong. But I'm also trying to be like <clears throat> straightforward too. You know, I'm not perfect at all, and so. Yeah, that's the only reason why I haven't posted that because I just don't want to deal with those comments of like just just be yourself, you know. It's like no kidding, man. I don't need that. What is it? It's kind of condescending. I think that's what it is. And also too, I'm a little bit arrogant. Where I, you know, I'm. Oh no, I'm I'm really arrogant when it comes to art. Like, I already feel like there's not nothing you can tell me that I'll, it's going to make anything better. It has to come from inside me. That's that's the truth. There's nothing anyone can say that. It's going to convince me that something can be better because, yeah, that's my superpower. Don't fuck with my superpower. It's one thing I got. But I don't like being a jerk to people. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to hurt people's feelings and I don't want to be an asshole. So that's why I try not to talk about too much. Or at least I try to come across not like an asshole. But I'm also gently like if you're if you're coming from a place of like of being respectful, I'll be hundred percent respectful to you too. Oh, I'm, I'm totally rambling now, right? Oh. Grande maestro. That sounds awesome. I don't know what that means. Grande maestro. Grande means big. Maestro is that like is that like a like maestro, like the master, is that what that means? Luciano Delgado, grazie. I lived in Italy once. 
Yeah, the people do the pouring. Yeah, there's a guy in Toronto who does that. He's, he's got like a big... Let's see what you are painting. Oh, shit. Fuck, I forgot. Sorry, I didn't even... I forgot uh, to switch to this thing. Yeah. Yeah, the pouring stuff. It is a craft. I guess you're right. I think that's a, that's a good way to describe it. It's like a craft. Like <clears throat> I remember in art school... One thing it reminds that I, I think I've, I've never forgotten, the art history professor said, we were trying to find art because that's the great mystery. I've got some great stories about what is art. <laughs> uh, okay, first of all, I'll quickly tell the story of uh, what he defined art as. He said, art is that which is artificial. <laughs> and that was about, and I remember even like thinking about that going, well, that's bullshit. Like, you know, then I had more and more thought about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, you really can't put a definition on art. It's very hard because it's so subjective. And that's probably if you were to break it down. That's the common fact. That, I mean, that's it. That is what is artificial. And that I remember so vividly him saying that. Because I always had that quest for what is art. I'll tell you my story now. Now, this is totally going to come across as arrogant, but this is the truth. <clears throat> so when I was in like, when I was young, ever since I was young, I was always like the, uh, just let's just say I was ahead of my time when it came to art. And in high school, it was pretty. It was pretty well known that I was going to win the art prize, which is the in the lower school, never school. They had like, like the 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 a prize for all kinds of things, like academia and stuff. And the only thing I was really good at was art. But like like so, I won the one in the prep school it was called, and they gave me a book that was signed by Ken Danby, who I actually met and had dinner with when I was a kid. My quick Ken Danby stories. He was over at my parents' house for dinner, and I was pretty young. Like, I was, I was, uh, let's say early teens or more. And, you know, I, even then I was like an art snob. I was thinking, ah, Ken Danby, big deal. You know, you just do realistic pictures of hockey players. Like, I can do that. And in fact, oh, I remember when it was. Okay, so I did this painting. This is how, okay, here it is. I'm going to show this painting that I did. It was when I did the baseball glove. Okay. Let me go to my um, uh, screen. Check this out. That is so cool. All right. I'm going to go to my website. This is this is when Ken Dandy came over for dinner because I remember I had done this painting. Okay. So this is what an arrogant little kid I was. It's baseball glove. <clears throat> I'm just typing a search for glove. Come on, you slow as crap website. Okay. There it is. Okay, so I was maybe nine or ten when I did this. I had a baseball glove. I remember my brother would play baseball with me. And he taught me how to like work the glove in. I actually even remember this particular baseball glove. So okay, so I was ten years old, nineteen eighty, <clears throat> and I was already thinking, you know what, this is kind of a shitty painting because look, look, look how um this. I remember this. <clears throat> See how I did a, a bit of like this light reflection. I was thinking because I did it. It was like watercolor. And pastel colors. I remember using pastels on this and thinking, you know what? You're just being lazy. You could do so much better. Like a little bit of sense of light on this thing. But for 10 years old, not bad. That was a life drawing. And I remember thinking, I'm going to make the background loose and just let it flow and stuff. And and I remember thinking, you know what? It's not even a perfect circle, but screw it. It was kind of fun to not do per And I remember looking down on this thing too. So I, I love this baseball glove. I remember how oh, stiff and hard it was. But I was even thinking, see that blue there? How it was kind of like an abstract shape. Okay, so I was 10 years old when, when What's-His-Face came over, Ken Danby, and I remember him telling me about his secret. His secret, and I'll tell you his secret now, was he painted with egg tempera, and he told me this thing where he used to mix the paint with eggs and he's buried under the ground for like three days. And I was looking over going, what the fuck are you telling me this for, you fucking weirdo? <laughs> That was it. Yeah, yeah. So I won that art award and big, you know, what did we do? And then I was, and then it was like, it was known that I was going to win the, for, for five years, it was known I was going to win the art award for the upper school until <laughs> we had to do a final project. And the project was worth a whole bunch of your grade. Like it was probably, I don't remember how much it was. It was probably like 40%, 50, something like that. Me, a couple friends, I remember for sure it was Al Younger was there. We decided for our our final project, group project, we'd be make a video called What is Art? And uh, <laughs> so 
and so Al was very good at art. It was like we were like the, like the best in the class, I think. Oh, another good painter who was was Ben Ben. Oh, fuck, who's Ben's line? Anyway, bottom line is instead of like putting effort into it, we basically got drunk and made this video like a couple days before called "What Is Art," and it was the most horrible piece of crap. And our art teacher, who we 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 loved and and, and also hated at the same time, <laughs> he was like unusually hard on us, but also we were also didn't take it too seriously. And he 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 made us he gave us a grade that basically let us pass but almost failed like like i think the grade on that was a failing grade so we all passed art but it was what we rightfully deserved a shitty shitty mark and there was no art award that year i think that was the only year they didn't give an art award there you go that's my story what's ben's name ben was a smart guy i think he went on he went on to like do a a law degree to Harvard, I think, or, or one of those Ivy League schools. I went to school with a lot of smart people, man. Okay. Um, ben, what the hell was Ben's last name? Okay. Uh, I think is it almost dry enough? Okay, let's try Maybe a different brush. Let's try. Uh, I think this one. Excuse me. We'll pick up the paint, nice, and we'll also. Oh, you. Yeah, just I thought it was softer than it was. I I got to do a better job of washing these. Yeah. So okay. So something I've learned since I started using water-based oils, painting. Okay. The only downside to water-based oils is the cleaning up is actually a lot harder than. Um, than um regular oils because turpentine just zaps the paint out <clears throat> whereas this you gotta really work it like this even though and, and here's what i noticed you gotta start use a lot of dish soap like i go through tons of dish soap now just to like because you run it under water and it looks like it's it's already um um clean and then you then you get some palm olive. I've been using palm olive. This really works well. And then the paint just pour, the color pours out. So I think that's what I've been doing wrong recently. What color is this? Yeah, let's do like a, a, a like. Let's try the browns. Let's just try that. Um. Yeah, I don't I don't know what this character is gonna be like. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be yet. Oh, maybe it'd be kind of cool to do like a Madonna and Child. I haven't thought about Madonna and Child forever. Madonna and Child. Man, they're all over Italy. Everything was Madonna and Child. Yes, yeah, so went to art school in Italy when I was in 1987, I think. And when the cool thing was, like, I don't even remember learning one single thing about artwork other than the art history of, of, of Italy. I learned a ton of shit about, about Italian art. That was cool. But as far as, you know, learning to do artwork, zero. But that's been my experience with all the art schools I've gone to. And that's the best way, the best, actually, the best art schools were just the opportunity to do whatever the hell you, you wanted to do. And that's that was actually kind of cool. I think... I got to give a lot of thanks to my parents for pushing me in that direction and giving me the space to do it, to learn by myself. Yeah, I was definitely encouraged uh, to do artwork since I was very, very young. And my mom is a good painter. I should say was because she hasn't painted in years. My dad is always bugging her to do to do some painting, but she always has reasons not to do it. Probably, are you watching, Mom? Okay, so so far this is crap. This is I'm not happy with it, but I already know what it's gonna be. I already know. It's just a matter of time. So I'm just gonna. It, so yeah, it's just like it's just a matter of time. It's it's gonna come out. What color is this?
Madonna and Child, right? So it's like a woman holding the baby. Oh, Madonna. Fuck. I forgot that the child is Christ. <laughs> So like Madonna and Child in Algonquin Park, if I'm going to do that, it's either going to be spooky weird person and you interpret as you want, or I have to do a, like a proper Madonna and Child so you can see her arm holding, uh, I hate saying the word Christ because it's, you know, I don't believe in any of that stuff, but, but uh, it's true, you know, Christ, whatever. So you can see it. And then I have to, if I'm going to do the Christ, it, it, it needs to be a proper human form. You know what I mean? I can't just do some lumpy thing, majiggy. <laughs> lumpy thing, majiggy. Oh, complimenti. Grazie, Eleonora. Italians are pretty funny. My first boss was Italian. Or oh, he still is Italian. And I love, he, he, <laughs> we had a pretty good relationship. <laughs> he used to swear at me in Italian, but in a very fun, playful way. Hey, Josh, ma che cazzo fai? Scemo. <laughs> ma che cazzo fai means like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he come up behind me and I, I, so I, was, I was always doing like 3D animation and, and, and 3D modeling and digital art making these games and he'd come up behind me and he'd go, Josh, hey, back I got to fly. <laughs> and, you know, give me a little smack in the back and stuff. And I, I don't know. I was totally cool with it. Things are definitely changed now. Um, like <laughs> there's no way the stuff he, he would do would fly now. But um, I loved it, man. Cause you know, we got to, cause I got to like sort of give him, I got to give it back to him a little bit. I'd be like, Fernando, hey, back in console five, Fernando. <laughs> I was I was about twenty five, and you no, know, he was probably in his forties or fifties. Man, I should ring him up again because he must be pretty old now. But he, we, uh, he was such a like, he was like, uh, he could sell anything to anybody. He was like this in, insanely good salesman. Okay, well, okay, so so is this gonna be a Madonna and child? Is that gonna be Madonna? Or maybe I'll make it. I kind of feel like just doing stuff, you know. Let's just let's just put like a big that there, not being so tight about it, right? Okay, I think. Uh, what I'll do, yeah. You know. Okay. What I'll do. Okay. What I'll do is ah, that's the brush I want. Hello, I love you. Okay. That's the brush. This is a this is a good brush. It's uh it's uh, you can just feel it like you can feel the quality you have to feel your brushes if you want to know if your brush is good you got to feel it like it feel the hairs are smooth and it's got it's very it's nice it's got a nice like rigidity to it I mean for for what I want to do this is a perfect brush it's got good spring to it oh, you can feel it's clean it's kind of like my dog's hair like when I pat my dog fluffy head it's very soft and that's that's sometimes that's what you really want. I guess that's why I don't really uh, I haven't been I never really focused on the brands of brushes because when I, I I make my decision almost entirely by touch. That is interesting because you normally you 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 buy brands and you stick with them. But I've been buying brushes for like three decades and I've never I don't even I honestly couldn't even name a, one brand of a brush. I'm sure it's probably based on the same brand. Like, I'm, I'm, I bet you Windsor Newton has probably, like, even with paints, to be honest, I never really 
thought too much with the with the what the thing was. Okay, all right, enough talking. Although I gotta be honest, man, the the, the ringing is extremely loud. That's why I couldn't sleep last night. I was actually in a lot of pain. <clears throat> it was a lot of physical pain, but also a lot of this goddamn ringing thing. So I was like, I was up to all hours because of this stupid nonstop ringing in my brain is just making you insane. Okay, so let's just put some light. Yeah, I like that. And let's just do some more of these. Like, whoa, where does that one come from? All right. Okay. Yeah, let's just add this other one over here. I guess that's kind of what it is. I don't want to do just landscapes. I don't want to limit myself as an artist to just Canadian landscapes. There's so much more in me than that. Than that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. You know, I love it, man. If, if one of my one of my best friends was through texting last night, and he was like, you know, you should do more figures. And I was just thinking about it, and I've probably done about 500 paintings and drawings that have figures in it, or more. And I realized that he probably, you know, I've never really shown most, like even my closest friends don't even know 99% of the things I've done. I just haven't bothered to show anybody. And uh, and and I was like, well, oh, I thought you just did forests. I'm like, no, man, that's just in the past, in the past two years. I mean, actually, that's not true. I've done forest my whole life. I can go back and show you paintings that look kind of like what I've been doing recently when I was like, you know, 18 or 19 or 20. Or younger, like 13. I was always into the kind of nature -y stuff. But most of the things I've done have been just like flat out weird and strange and don't even make sense. I just haven't really shown them that much. And they're not they're not attractive. They're not like things that you 99% of people would want to actually even look at. You know, they're weird and they're like they're like twisted and, you know, and it's all because it was just more like personal stuff, just things that I felt like I wanted to do, right? Okay. This is an idea I'm, I'm stealing from Tom Thompson. Like, he had the benefit of actually using nature as inspiration to see what was going on. He did, the, he did the, um, these trees with downward strokes. I didn't even think about that because I was kind of like obsessing on birch trees. So, and I kind of, you know, I didn't even look at the what birch trees did. So that most of my birch trees just don't even make, like don't even have anything to do with reality. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm laying down like a, a foundation of these lines and I'm going to go in later and I'm going to paint negative space, paint the negative space to make, it, make them look good. So maybe I should do a couple thick, thicker trees, like thicker. Okay. Oh, I got to blow my nose again. Okay. So I don't know what the hell I've just been talking about. You know what, you, you got to get a little, to do, for me, okay, for me at least, you got to be a little crazy. Like, I, I have to, I have to allow myself to, to, to be a little weird, to be honest. Weird and a little nuts, because if there's something, there's freedom in it. There's freedom in, in being a little nuts. The thing is that I just don't like uh, people who, uh, I, I, you know, uh, yeah. my goal was always to sort of be like, behave just like a regular person. And yeah, you know what it comes down to? I always wanted to be judged based on the quality of what I do and nothing else. So that's why I tried not to like, 
be some weirdo. But then again, I never, I was cool about people being weird, just not me. I don't like the attention. I don't like how the attention draws. Okay, I think that might be a good. That's probably. It's okay. I'm not sure if I like this composition, to be honest. Okay, what kind of. Let's see if I can do a face now. Or some kind of like, I want to give the impression of, of this person who's here. So I'll do some, I'll do some lines that might give you an idea, and let your brain fill in the rest. Oh, what if they're kneeling? That would be kind of cool. Yeah, let's make him kneel. So where would your body be? If that's like an arm. I'm making them holding themselves. I like that idea. So if you can see here, there's an arm holding themselves. And then. Yeah. So, okay. So maybe I'll add a bit of lightness so you can, you can sort of see the shape a bit. I like making the elbow come out a bit. Okay. Now the fun part. Okay, so let's do. I like joking around a lot, but I'm actually kind of I'm actually very serious about the stuff I do. Like I really do care strongly about. Trying to make something that is that's good. That's a fair amount of bullshit babble right there, isn't it? Okay. Is this thing working? Stop. Is it playing? Okay, what if this, maybe, okay, I'll put a dark, I'll put darkness down first, then I'll put some light, is it going to come across? Well, maybe, okay, I thought I had squished out some of that paint, I need to get more of that, or I could just make some, I'll make it, I'll take this color, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, oh, what I'm doing, I'm, I couldn't see all this time. I was mixing up some paints over here. Okay. So my thought is over here is that kind of lighter part of a land down here. And I'm put, I put some dark stuff, but I need to make it lighter. So I don't... Ooh, that's kind of a neat green. Maybe I'll use that, but not there. I was thinking more like an orangey, warmer color, but I could still use this this green here. Why don't I use that green on this dude? Okay, so uh, to make the color, let's try putting a bit of red in there. No, and use yellow to make it warm. Come on, yellow, I barely have enough. Not quite there. I could walk over three feet and get the color I was actually thinking of. I could have done that. I think I will. Because there's something I'm looking for. I'm wanting. <clears throat> like this there we are so wait I could use these but it's not that color uh, well yeah 
I could use these. These would probably be good enough. All right. Yeah, that's the color I want. It's not this. I mean, I'll use that. It's so close to that. I don't know where the where it is. Ooh. What time is it? It's 20. Okay. Ooh, that's horrible. I gotta clean that brush. All right. Oh, it's Italian. I can't read Italian. E molto interessante verde com la tua creative davanti un opera de art. Well, it's whatever you wrote sounds very, very complimentary. So, grazie. No comprende, but grazie. <laughs> it sounds nice. Okay, listen, I gotta go wash these. These are just a little bit too gray. Okay, I'll be one sec. Is all clean. Oh, it's very interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elnora. Okay, let's go. Oh, I, I've got these nice selection of brushes. If I zoom out right over here, you can't just outside of the frame of the view. I don't know. I just like brushes. Okay. So what, what I need to do, I really need to go and <coughs> make, um, okay. So this is going to, this is kind of fun. I'm going to go and I'm going to paint the negative space. That's what it's all going to be all about. And what I mean when I say negative space, it's a technique where instead of drawing pause, like positive stuff, like the lines, you draw the space in between and that creates the shapes and what it has a nice effect of making all these lines not so rigid and perfect. So uh, I will start with, I, I wanna work on the water. So I'm gonna choose, there's a whole bunch of blues that I just love. Like this one is nice. Look at this color. That's a beautiful blue. It's beautiful. So Let's start, I kind of, I'll start with like dabs and chunks. And I'll look for little spaces. And I might even create some, some branches with just the negative spaces. Like boom, 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 boom. And this is... I'm gonna I'm gonna paint in like I don't like the shape of the head, so I'm gonna I can fix it right now. And then I'll bring in this color. I'll make it lighter. Mm. Oh, 
Holy Christ. I would love to have a little peace of mind in my head. That'd be nice. Thank you. Thank you. It's like every... I remember it... Oh... I wonder how many of my stories are actually factually true. Like, I wonder if my, you know, you know, your memories can, can change. Like, for example, I, I try to be as accurate as I can. And I'm just thinking about, like, I wonder what grade we got. Like, I, I kind of remember getting a 52. On that project like for example there's a painting I wanted to show that I really liked let me show you this is a painting I was gonna post about um, let me go to here check this out this is a beautiful little painting okay go to screen um, oh, how do I find it I don't, I don't know what I called it okay go to gallery view by year and I want to say 19, let's go back for age 9 or 10. Let's go back to age, age 9 or 10. Okay. No. Earlier. Gallery. If you buy, I have way more. This is the problem. I probably did about 50 or 60 drawings and paintings when I was 10. But I can only, I only am... Um, like, I'd have to go, I've got a, a whole pile of other stuff. I just, it takes so long to photograph each thing and then show it and then try to research to make sure you get the right date and stuff. Because for the most part, I put dates on my things. I'd even, I used to even put, like, the exact time when I finished it. Then I'd write on the back. But if it wasn't, I, I can't remember. Like, look at this. I did way more things when I was nine, eight or nine. This is the 22. I used to, I used to go out and shoot. When I was a kid, it would be at the cottage. I used to take it off the wall. I used to be able to. I used to be able to go buy ammunition at the local like little store up near Hunts uh, near Dwight when I was a kid. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe I was eleven. I don't even know what am I doing. Oh, I'm trying to remember that really nice little yeah eighty one. So ten or eleven. So this is this nice little painting. Here it is. Garden. Oh, okay. I'm right. Okay, look, building in Gord, France. Okay, so this is when we, when I, when we lived in France for a little, for for a little while. Look at this nice little watercolor. Isn't that nice? I was like uh, eleven, ten by eight, nineteen eighty one. We lived in this in the south of France. And what's cool is is my mom wrote that. I can tell my mom's handwriting. So Josh eighty one. Ah, that's that eight one looks too good for me and i think my mom my mom wrote this josh 81 and gourd but isn't that like a nice painting like even if you look up here i like how free it was like like check out this little flower box just pew, 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 pew. and look at this cool look at the cool pattern it's like looking at someone else's stuff that's kind of how i feel about it. like look at this these little dots of patterns isn't that neat and it's sort of like kind of abstracted flat like how the this pathway is flattened out and this thing is flattened out and here's a little here's a little uh like a flower uh, uh, what was it called thing for pouring water that neat? so i remember my point was i wanted to make sure i was getting the right um time like the right year before posting it so i was calling my parents saying do you remember when did we go to france that year when did we live in gourd so this is living in, in Gord, France. Yeah, my mom definitely wrote that, Josh, 1981. Uh, probably can't see very well, but this is like a drawing of a little alleyway kind of thing. Oh, th this is the flower. Oh, look, this, there's the flower pot. So that painting I just did was of this section over here and lower. 
That's pretty cool. You may not be able to see it very well, but but yeah, I'm 100 percent positive. There's that there's that flower pot. And I actually remember doing this one. This was kind of funny. Unfortunately, I it's it's kind of faded so much it's hard to see. But this was my hands doing a drawing. You know, one of those sort of like uh, breaking the fourth barrier kind of thing. So <laughs> I've got a room. Look at that! I never noticed that. Is that a, I gave myself a wedding ring. <laughs> That, see, that's that's my handwriting. See how shitty it is? So my mom wrote this, August 1981. But I, that's my that's my shitty handwriting. But this is my hand drawing this water. So there's a waterfall scene and there's a tree. Oh, it looks like there's a sun set up, a sun over here, and some woman wearing a dress. I don't know where I, I think I just made I may just made that up. Okay. Alright. So my point is I try to be accurate. Okay, this one I was particularly proud of because I remember specifically not tracing this. Now, I, I was never big into, I wasn't big into drawing comics at all. But what I remember about this particular one was the muscle shape looked good. So I was 11 years old and I just, like the musculature, I remember like that shape. And I, so I was looking at a comic book. I think it was the cover of a, a cover of a Spider-Man and probably long gone obviously but i remember even like looking at the calf muscle and going and look at the fingers see how i got them like i i was there's something about some comics have very good musculature they're very dy like there's something flowing and i just remember thinking you know that's pretty good like look at my handwriting that's my shitty handwriting let's compare it so i could draw but i couldn't fucking write and uh I remember going yeah this is this is that one I remember the big thing about doing this was I'm not tracing, I'm not cheating. So even back then, I was really hard on myself thinking that it would only be good if he didn't like cheat it. Even though I was copying someone else's work, I still felt that was the thing about this one. All right. Oh yeah, this one. I remember this. This one was based. I, there was a book. I, I'm I'm just stalling because I just wanna I just wanna drink some coffee and just chill for a sec. This one I remember being not bad. And it was, I believe, I had a book of Michelangelo's sculptures, maybe, I think. See, here you go. So that's my handwriting. That's how shitty it was. And then my mom wrote August 1981. So I was 11 years old. And I remember I remember doing this thing, going, looking at, looking at the uh, armor of the, like the stomach muscles and thinking, this is all good. Then I looked at the foot and went like, oh, that's too crap. Like it should have come down more and I need to finish it. And I remember thinking, you know what? Let's just move on. I remember thinking the, this hand was good and this was garbage. I remember thinking his head was too small. And then these were just designs. I think th these were like straight up copies. And I think I kind of made this one up. This probably looks so much crappier. And uh, yeah. So this is some some sculpture. Was it the Uffizi Gallery, maybe? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was for a photograph and not live, because we did we did go see tons of uh, we did go what did we? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm totally stalling. I'm gonna go back to painting. Let me go back to this. Now that I. My English is rusty. Uh, no problem, Elnor. Okay. All right, let's go back to this. Well, what I liked about that little segue was it should have given some time for this paint to dry. So that's one of the main benefits of acrylic. Is that you could, like within minutes, it's, it's dry and then you can go over stuff. So you can... I mean, there definitely are benefits to acrylic from that perspective. I still don't think they the colors are as nice and they don't mix as well. I guess what it is, for large paintings, I have to do oils because I want to be able to come back later. And have the same colors there. Especially because I've been getting so tired so quickly, you know, I am really, I'd say for most of my life, I, I could spend all day doing this. 
but certainly this this toxic thing is more taxing. And also the ringing the ears just fucks me up. Here's my technique. I don't know if you can see it, but I always hold my other hand with my hand when I was when I'm doing painting on on a flat surface. Make allows you to do much more fire work. <laughs> Woo, baby! Okay. Maybe I'll keep these brushes here and then not mix it in the water and just let's see. I need a oops, sorry for the other thing. I'm just gonna move this over a bit. It's more centered. Let's see if I can bend this thing. Okay. That's probably a little bit better. Okay. Let's try. This is going to be too bright. I can already tell. Let's try mixing these two. Oh, that smells good. I know you kind of do miss the smell of oils. You, I do. Did you know that smell is one of the most powerful triggers for memories? In most people, smells can. Um, trigger long-term memories. Memory is a cool thing if you ever studied it. Once something is typically committed to long-term memory, it typically stays there. And the, the act of remembering is is an issue simply of recalling a cue that you can that'll trigger the association of that memory. Isn't that interesting? 
to think that your brain has stored an incredible amount of memories that you can't consciously necessarily call up. Is this still working? Oh, I thought I lost live stream for a second. So your brain is stores most of the memories. No, 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 no. I, I believe this is from my just I'm trying to remember from studying psychology that your brain has stored these long term memories and you have to bring up you need a cue to, to stimulate the memory to, to trigger it. The association and often smell is a very potent way to trigger a long term memory because you've got long term memories and short term memories. Short term memories is something that's in your prefrontal cortex. It's in your consciousness, and you've got to to create a long term memory. You've got to have an association, like a like just think of a neural network, a connection to your I remember something very cool. Okay, I'm just, just babbling about tangents here, but there's something called a mylar sheath. If you know how neural uh, neural the, the the physiology of of neurology, about how 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 your brain works, basically you've got this tiny gap between your neurons, right? Neural pathways. It's called a synapse. And in order for for one neuron to pass a signal to the next neuron through this gap. You've got these little tiny, let's call them particles, biological particles called neurotransmitters. And the cool thing is, they're like, what happens is on the on one side of the, the giving side of the neuron, I think it's called a dendrite. Imagine it's like this lock and key, right? So imagine the neurons are going this way over to here. Okay, well, actually I think it's like this, yeah. There's a small gap. That's the synapse. In order for this signal, electric signal, to pass down along here to the next one, neurotransmitters are released. And when enough of them has this, when it passes like the potentiality, when enough of them connect over here to the little tiny little locky key gaps, this one sends it, triggers an electric signal and it continues on. And that's when you hear about like dopamine and, and serotonin and all these neurotransmitters. That's what it is. Certain neurons have different types of of um, neurotransmitter chemistry. Now the cool thing about memory is the connections become stronger and the physiology of it is all along the path of a neuron is this outer sheath called the mylar sheath. Pretty sure it's called the mylar sheath. And the cool thing is with memories, the connections become more stronger when the mylar sheath is thicker. So basically, when you've got like billions of connections and they, they form like a pattern, a neural network, and that's essentially like, that's the like the general understanding of, of a memory is a, 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 a neural pathway pattern that is physiologically reinforced and they believe the mechanism is the mylar sheath is thickened. So what happens is the more times that pathway is triggered, the mylar sheath thickens and thickens. And that, so there's a physiological, I mean, that makes sense when you think about it, right? There's got to be a, a physiological reason for, for, for memories and thoughts. And I, that always fascinated me is that, oh, that's, I remember reading about that and going, whoa, that's like, you're learning about the universe. You're learning about, like if anyone wonders, like that's why I love studying neurophysiology. That was my my focus at in uh, university. I did a degree in, in in psychology, and my focus was uh, the neurophysiology of the brain. Uh, I had idea like I had uh, you know I was gonna go to medical school. That was one of my it was it was gonna be the creative arts or medical school. So I did hard science psychology. I mean it was mostly biology, but I loved learning about the brain and how it worked and like stuff like that. Like just. Like you're you're given the secrets about how this stuff worked. If you ever wondered like how how memory happens, like that, just I loved it. In fact, here's look at this. Huh. One of my favorite books of all time. I actually had it sitting over here, it's collecting dust. The physiology of behavior. This is such a cool book. 
I mean, I basically memorized this whole thing. And what's usual, unusual about it is how well I've kept it. I've memorized this, this entire book. I, I, and I used to read this for pleasure. And I remember, oh, man, I love this book. You should totally check it out. So many cool... Um, there's so many cool references to how they figured out stuff. And it had to do with, like, you know, uh, traumas. Uh, so, like, you know, if there's a trauma... Oh, my God, this is bringing back memories. I love the, the summaries and the concluding remarks. Oh, wow. I love this. I remember this so... So this was in my... I, I would like most of university for me. I didn't. I, I don't remember. It was just like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I, but I remember it was my last year, my fourth year, where I actually started enjoying it and learning. And it was mostly because the courses I were taking, they were either the fourth year or master's courses, because only in your fourth year you could do master stuff, and that was the most interesting thing. It's like I got to do clinical psychology. I got a, a for example. I, I, you know, I focused, like I, I was interested in child, child development, like brain development. So I actually did um, a clinical master's course. It was either fourth year or was, I'm pretty sure it was, it was like they had combination masters and and, psych, and and then fourth year courses. But I did a clinical course. So for a year, my clinical work, <laughs> clinical work, I worked with a, a girl, I won't say her name. Um, she was nine years old and she had petite mal seizure syndrome and what it was about was um, it was a, it was a small group of kids and we did lab work but we also went and, and did and I did this a couple times a week while I was at university um, went to their homes and they would have the same kids in the basement and I would be basically monitoring their play and altering their um, <coughs> social interactions because what they found was kids with um, some with the, with a uh, neurological or physiological like neurological problems um such as her who she would have these petite mal seizures all the time um and you wouldn't even know she was having it her eyes would just sort of roll back and she would just be it was causing behavioral uh and social issues and so what they were trying to do was correct the social issues <coughs> and you had to be very uh, in order, because what was happening is they found that over time these kids would fall behind in life because they didn't get Tra let's just call it training about social interactions because other kids wouldn't play with them because they were strange. Like for one kid, oh, he was so adorable. He was the most fragile little boy. He was probably about 10 years old, but he had the body of like a five or six year old. And, and his, his, his limbs were all so thin. And I remember he could fold himself up to like a little package. And I remember like, like so, part of the things we do is is we would monitor their their interactions, and when they started just playing by themselves, because that was one of the big things was they would ignore other other kids, and they wouldn't interact. So you sort of had to like intervene and and help them interact and give them positive re reinforcement for certain behaviors that we were monitoring. But I remember I had to pick him up sometimes, and he was just like this little folded little thing. I remember he had a heart issue. That was one of the things that was so sad is that he had some sort of congenital defect in his heart. But he was also because so he was so physically weak that he couldn't interact with other kids because he was so fragile. It was like one of those like, uh, you know, the people have that that that, uh, that fragile bone system with like a break. But it was more like I can't remember if it was like a, a fear of him having heart attacks or something. But we had to be you know physically careful with him. But that was one of the cool things I got to do, and I remember. Uh, yeah, we'd go over there. there this is in Montreal when I was, and uh, so we started off in the lab. So we were we had to be trained on this this sort of like this. It was it was half of it was a study and half of it was actual clinical work. Right, it was actual real therapy. I gotta remember who the professor was. So the professor, it was a mixture with a professor and and like actual physicians. Of course, we were doing it. It was all volunteer. Like it was we weren't paid for it because it was part of the course. But I didn't care. It was really, it was really neat. So I got to see, I saw real improvements to her, because there was this danger, um, and, and later on there was associations with, like, for example, criminal behavior. Uh, a lot of uh, kids, um, it was like this, like this, this feedback loop, where they wouldn't interact with other kids. It would make them fall behind academically. They would be more likely to have behavior issues, and it would, it would just cycle, and that would be their life. So it was. Uh, 
It was really interesting. What else did I do? Oh, the other the other course that I remember, um, I was able to take a couple of these master level courses, and one was they called it human human behavior and it, no human sexuality and its deviances, and that 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 one really opened my mind. This is uh, like right now, trans uh, trans stuff is really big and popular, or at least seems to be you know much more in the 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 media or whatever. But back then. Really, there was, like, at least to my understanding, I'd never heard of anything like trans. I didn't even, didn't even cross my mind. Like, back then, I think there were cross-dressers and drag drag queens, I guess is the proper term. I don't know what's the proper term. So I was aware of that. Like, for example, we used to go to a, this place, in a, this bar in, in a Toronto, El Cavento Rico, where the big thing was around 1 o'clock. This is like on a, on a, this is a nightclub. It was kind of like a... Uh, Spanish salsa dancing kind of nightclub, but the big thing was drag queens, and they used to do this performance. And I swear to God, I almost always I got picked so often, and I'm like I hated being the center of attention. So they would around one o'clock in the morning in this nightclub, in this underground nightclub on College Street, the the drag queens would come out and they would like sing stuff, and everyone would be in a huge circle. Uh, I think most people would be sitting on the floor, and the people behind them standing up. So imagine a nightclub was just a big floor. And they would often pick people out of the crowd to go bring in front and then sing to them and do stuff. And I swear to God, I was like a magnet for that stuff. I have no idea why. I was like trying to shy away, maybe because I was always trying to like hide myself. And, and half of me was like, you know, I was just, I didn't, I wasn't shy. I just didn't like fucking all the eyes on me. But I got picked out a bunch of times and I had to stand there. <laughs> Anyhow, so going back to the story of university. One of my favorite courses was Human Sexuality and its Deviations. That's how it was. That was the actual name of it. And I remember they brought, they, they showed us like penis pumps. I had no idea this existed. So we learned about erectile dysfunction and uh, prostitution. Uh, uh, um, and one, the coolest one was there was a professor, I believe, of economics. And he was probably about 60. And he came in to talk to us, and it was a small class. I want to say there's about 10 to 15 people, like students. God, I don't even remember where the class, I remember where I was sitting. And anyhow, he came in, he just, just looks like a regular professor, had kind of gray hair, I think a little bit balding. And he's a big guy, he was probably about 6'2". And uh, the topic was, I don't remember the terminology then. It was essentially transsexuality and cross-dressing or whatever the fuck it was. No, it was transsexuality because he said he was transitioning to a woman. And I'll tell you, back then, we had, like, it was just never, like, there were, first of all, there was no internet. So the amount of information you had, you got was just, you know, it was through school or whatever, you know, books you might have <coughs> or whatever your life experience was, right? So at least for me, I had never even heard of, like, such a thing about, um, about someone becoming a, like a different gender, right? So what he did was he says next week he's going to come in as as a woman, and we were just like you know we were we were re you know open minded totally. So it was never never like a like everyone was pretty cool. I think that's what I liked about it. everyone was totally cool. I was like okay, let's just you know go with the flow because there is no way like even though some people might have been embarrassed, there's no way you could like joke about it because here's this person right in front of you saying this is this is me and it was it was one of those experiences where you're just like wow this is like never I, I, some things I, I would never have thought of right so anyhow the next week or whenever he came in next he came in as this as a woman but he was like this big guy like he was bigger than me like he was like six two and 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 we were just like wow I mean you're he, he was not feminine in the slightest bit I think that was probably the most shocking part was there's only so much he could have done to be become more feminine looking. But I remember he was wearing a dress. I remember he was wearing some kind of shoes. I remember he had earrings. And the one thing we talked about most was the voice. Like, what are you going to do about your voice? Are you going to try to make it higher? And, he, and I think he said he was working on it. I think that's what it was. He said he was like – he was uh, – and I think he tried using a higher voice and stuff, and uh, that was just so fascinating. So, so all the trans stuff that's happening now, it's like for me, it's like ah, man, I, I was like, I had no problem with it. 
so long ago. Yeah. <coughs> For me, it's just annoying now where people are like getting self righteous about it. Like, it's like, dude, you don't know me at all. I was cool about it. <laughs> Probably, you know, I had no problem with that. I wasn't hurting anybody. It was just, that was just him, right? It was, it was pretty interesting stuff. What else did we learn in that class? That was such a cool class because it didn't even feel like school or, or, or university because it was just so – it was so hands-on. Like I remember they brought in a penis pump and and like I had no idea that you would squeeze the testicles. Like that's where the – often they would place the pump part. Like would you, would, you, would you ever have thought of that? Like I didn't even think that – like I thought, I thought at the time that was like a radical – insane thing to do and i actually to be honest i didn't even know about erectile dysfunction I, I had no idea like in my 20s that men would have problems getting erections it was just something that never crossed my mind so that was that was good man that was good to learn like things like that it was such a hands-on approach oh okay my favorite class of all time was the gate theory control of pain and the professor patrick wall I got the highest. I got the highest grade in the faculty. Woohoo! It's probably because I was so into it. So Patrick Wall was the professor, and he actually wrote the book that I love, the Gate Control Theory of Pain. It's not a long book, but it taught me so many interesting things. And so check it out. I mean, in, in, I could sum up the book in the concept that blew me away in a few seconds. Pain is actually controlled. In your lower brains, in your lower spine, just um, you know, above your butt, um, in your lower back, when you receive pain signals from, say, pain receptors in your hand, you get a cut. The signal goes to your lower brainstem. Your brain actually has signals that go down to your lower brain, your lower your your spinal cord, and there's a little, essentially, a gateway that controls whether or not the pain signal goes, gets up to your brain. So you ever wonder, like, how people can like um, can um, have mind over matter that process takes place in your lower back Isn't that fucking cool so that's what the gateway is so it's actually it's not in your brain essentially where the where you moderate pain and overcoming pain it's in the neural pathways in your lower spinal cord now, that just might seem strange to people because you think your brain is where all the activity takes place, which are where it does. Where you the, once the signal reaches your brain, your brain can then interpret it as pain and you know, and then there, therefore you process it there. But it actually has to pass through this little gateway. Hence the gateway control of pain. And the reason why I loved it so much is because all the examples and behavioral psychology was all was all about these weird use cases that helped validate what the theory behind it was and that had to do with like brain trauma so there would be like you know there's there's a famous book that everyone in psychology always reads it's called the man the man who mistook his wife for a hat and it's it's about someone who you know a guy has a brain injury and so there's so many cool stories about the, the visual cortex and then um like for example you can actually have a brain injury in a part of your, your your brain that would say interpret um, information, so the visual aspect goes straight to your brain, like it's inter it's getting the correct signal, but there might be something wrong, and it's usually due to like let's say you have a blood clot or a brute force trauma or something, so your brain is interpreting differently that you're not even conscious of. For example, there are people who are technically blind, but can still catch a baseball catch a ball when you throw it at them, because what is happening is their 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 visual. Um, their eyes, let's just call them their eyes, that, that whole mechanism in the neural pathway is perfectly fine and functioning. And I am a perfect example of that. Holy shit. So, so let me finish the, the, the neural, the, the visual problem. So you've got very specific areas of the brain that interpret information that's either visual or auditory. For example, in your left, in your, in your, there's something called the locus cerulis. And locus, uh, yeah, the locus cerulis. Um, I believe there's a small region of your brain, a little organ on the left side above your ear. Um, Locus cerulis, I think. Anyhow, what it does is it receives information signals from your, your ear and it interprets it as language. And if you have a, you have a brain injury there, 
you can hear things but not understand them, I believe. Or it could be where you understand it, but when you speak, it comes out as gibberish. Okay, I'm having a little bit of an issue right now because this is what happens when, when it's too loud in my ear. I, it's, it triggers like panic attacks because I have a... Like the, right now, I'm, I'm fighting with the sound in my head. It's so loud. <clears throat> and, and when I'm aware of it, it becomes very stressful. Ooh, I have the same problem. I have, a, I have, a, I have an exact problem because my right ear functions perfectly fine. But I'm losing, losing, oh, losing, oh. Oh, God, I hate this. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I just have to zone out for a second. Oh. Saying, uh, I'm losing hearing in this ear. My ear works fine. There's a little lesion on my right auditory nerve that's blocking the signal to go to my brain. My brain is interpreting the lack of signal by creating a, a frequency of sound. It's so loud in my head. <sighs> Do it. <clears throat> I can do it. I can do it. God damn it, you fucker. Just leave me alone. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh. So that's a perfect example of how they figure out how parts of the brain function by when someone has a lack of something, when something is missing, they can localize. That's the coolest thing. Ooh. The other thing that's cool is the homunculus. This is a really fun concept. A homunculus is a visual mapping of your brain in the shape of a person. What that means is, okay, I can do this. Hold on. Oh, okay, what it means is, your brain, your body has uh, receptors. There's different type of receptors in your body. Pain, pressure, heat, stretching. There are specific neurons. Like, for example, in your lips, you've got a lot of touch receptors that can, that can detect pressure. Okay? And, and heat and cold. These are spe this is cool. There are specific neurons that detect these different sensations. And I can't remember how many. I think it was like seven or so. There might be more. Stretch, heat, cold, pressure. Uh, I can't remember. Anyhow. And if they go too hard, they're interpreted as pain. The homunculus is a visual representation of your body where your body is exaggerated depending on where your sensory neurons are. So... So imagine, so for example, what's a good example? Okay, your ear. Your ear where there's lots of cartilage would be represented very small, but maybe by your earlobe would be larger because there's more receptors there. So you have this ridiculous looking person. I don't know why the fuck I'm saying, I think I'm just saying it because I'm trying to distract myself. But I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just want to show because it's such a cool, I love the homunculus. Let me, let me show you this picture. I'm gonna go to the screen. Did that, did that work? Yep. And I'm going to type in homunculus. H U hum, ha, hum, H U M U L C U L O U S. I just need the Google. It's, it's probably spelled wrong. Yeah, look at this. I love it. So, this is what our body would look like if our. Um, Neuron, if you, if our uh, sense our sensory neurons were relative in size, 
So you got a big tongue. You got huge. Isn't it amazing your hands are that large? Look how small the penis would. You think the penis would be like much bigger? Um, that's that looks like more like a, a sculpture. Let's just go to um, something a bit more. Yeah, this is might be a bit more. Okay, that looks more realistic. Because look how big the head of the penis is, so much better. But here's the cool thing. It's mapped to physical parts of your brain. So this is looks like a cross section. So there's lateral medial, so there's the outside, and there's the internal, right? So this is like your your eyes would be probably about here. But look, isn't that cool? It there you can and this is kind of neat. The way they figured this out was they would do like open brain surgery and they would uh <laughs> When someone's having open brain surgery, they would also do tests by touching parts of your brain with a little electronic stimulator, let's call it a little rod, and then people would react differently. And also they could be, they would be awake during this stuff and they could say, oh, I smell I smell something or I, I, I can see a color. And that's how they'd map this thing out over, over time. Isn't that in, amazing how your brain works? See, look how small the ears are. This is a better representation. I think this one up here was more like a, just a 3D model that someone was being creative with. Homunculus. I love it. This is cool. So this is your, you know, you've got two hemispheres that that, that uh, can interpret things differently. Yeah, you always hear about the left and right brain. I'll just start spewing some interesting shit out as I paint, okay? Because it helps with my tinnitus. Dolphins. Um... When you think about it, we're mammals and they breathe air. You ever wonder how they sleep? Well, guess what? They have left and right hemispheres, but they are very homogenous compared to ours. We have, like I said, remember I said the left side of your brain over here, locus cerulis, that's a specific area of your brain that's focused on language interpretation. And you don't have it on the right-hand side necessarily. So if you get a brain injury, it, it really depends on which side of the brain you have. And the other cool thing, now, just to contradict that a bit, there's something called neuroplasticity, which means your brain can actually, um, modif let's just say, it's not modifying itself, but it can take over the functions on the other side of, of missing areas. That's why, and they, they found this because there's people who have like large chunks of their brains missing, um, you know, through an injury or an accident or whatever happened, and they're still functioning fine. Like, you know, they're, they're you know, so it really depends what part of your brain is, is affected? Uh, one area that I always found very fascinating is the back of your brain stem is an area called the pons. And the cere cerebell, yeah, pons? Yeah, the pons. It's like a little, these little tiny little prune shaped little small objects. And what's cool about them is they regulate your sleep and consciousness. And so if you ever wonder when you fall asleep, it has to do with like like a mechanism in the lower part of your brain stem, those little, those little things. And uh, the way they figured some of that out, I remember there was one study they did with cats. And it's pretty sca it's sad to hear about, but this is what they did. They cut out part of the pons region on cats. And one of the results was a cat was permanently asleep. But it, it, it oh, so I should have mentioned to you, there's an automatic nervous system. And it, so your autonomic nervous system is like things that you have no control over, like your heartbeat and breathing. And uh, when you're asleep, your pons... Um, you know, they, they, they go through a process where they turn off, they control your 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 body movements. And that's why you are essentially paralyzed when you're asleep, so that you don't injure yourself, right? Because if you're acting out in your dreams, you'd be like moving around all the time. And some people have this disorder. But what they did with this cat study, let's call it, <coughs> they, they, they cut out part of the pawns. And this cat, um, some whatever, the, one or many cats, I don't remember how, how it worked. But it was permanently asleep and eventually died because you need, you know, it's... it's critical part of your functioning is it would it would be acting out its dreams in real life so like chasing mice and whatever while it was asleep so that's kind of a cool part of the brain is the that part uh here's something i never understood the physiology of your eyes you have two eyeballs i don't know if you can see this so here are your eyeballs there's the optic nerves they actually cross over and go to your other side, your other, your left and right hemisphere, like they, they, there's something called the corpus callosum, which is like the connection between the brains. Why the fuck do we have, do our eyes cross over? I never, I never got a good answer for that. I'm sure there is one, but it's just weird. So your right eye goes to your left hemisphere, and your, your, and vice versa. That's something I got to look up. I'm surprised I don't know that. You'd figure I would know that. 
I'm just trying to think. Like, imagine that all the things, all the things they've uh, discovered since then, all the uh, cool and interesting things. Okay. Oh, okay. So I think I just, I went through a, 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 a just a, a very brief event. That's what happens to me quite a lot. That's why I'm, I think I'm a shut in now. Is it because this goddamn the uh, it triggers like uh, this, like where I can just, I, I just, I'm not there anymore. Like I, I, it's so overpowering. Oh, what's wrong with this brush? Yeah, it's really messed with my life quite a bit. And I'd say, you'd never know this about me. Like, if you were to meet me, like, there's no outward... I'm really good at faking it. There's no outward... Kind of, oh, that's too fucking thick. There isn't much to, sh to show that, that this thing is going on in my head when I'm talking to people. They would they'd have no idea. <sighs> it's really not fun, man. It really sucks... It's sad thing. I gotta have you know. There's nothing they can do about it. There's no cure. <clears throat> but like, uh, but in some ways, it's made me much stronger. I need to bring more nice colors out. Whew. One thing I'm stressed out is I've been I've been rejected for the past the past seven no six I've applied to six exhibits and these aren't even big ones these are just like local Toronto exhibits where hundreds of artists can show and I've been rejected for the past six in a row when applying for them. And that's been very depressing, man, because it's like I'm getting – and I I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, I look at some of the stuff they've accepted and I'm like, what? Like there's stuff that just looks like high school. And I'm thinking, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Like, wow. It's like, really? Is that – so that's something I've been really – depressed about I'm super anxious because there's another one I want to apply for the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibit literally hundreds of people and you pay them thousands of dollars for the opportunity to set up a booth and I'm just like I keep on getting rejected from these things and part of me is like you know what that's okay like that's just life right but I was I was actually really looking forward to doing this thing like this is and this is hard for me to do for me to do that is like a major event because I really don't like being in front of people or, or I don't like just the whole organizing thing is just just not fun for me. It's like much more than I think the average person. But I just keep on getting rejected, man. And I'm like, all right, all right. I just, but my philosophy is I'm just going to keep trucking ahead. I'm not going to give up. I'm confident. I'm confident in myself when it comes to this, so I'm just gonna. My philosophy is just to shut the hell, shut the hell, just keep on trying, do my best, keep on trucking ahead, and in time, it'll things will work out. So I guess I'm also like thinking about other artists too who have the same. Pro you know, I'm not alone in this by any stretch of imagination. So it's like, let's say one day I'm successful. That's that's the thing that I'm gonna remember the most is the hardest times, because these are these are hard times for me. There's no question about it. Life is not easy for me, but I'm gonna remember this and remember that I, I stuck to it. You know, I stuck to it. 
I think it'd be nice if there was like something on the horizon here. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm gonna keep on doing, no matter how hard it gets. If, you know what? It also, too, the reason why I don't, I'm not, like completely destroyed by this, this shit I have is because it makes, it makes everything so much more valuable. The harder it is, the more, the hard. What am I trying to say? The harder it is. This is this is one of the things that's hard for me is that I, I can't it, it it distracts me from from thoughts and I have trouble focusing on thoughts sometimes. What I'm trying to say is, ah, uh, god damn it! Imagine having a someone blasting a megaphone in your ear. It's like it's no wonder I can't think because of this fucking megaphone going off. I had, oh yeah, something about perseverance. That's the only thing I gotta just keep it up. Okay, now is when things start getting nice. Because what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start bringing in some brighter colors. And they're just going to, like, just make things just uh, nicer. Like, there'll be yellows. Let's just bring over here. Wow, that sucks, man. Uh, I feel so self-conscious now about this stuff. Like, I really hate doing this. And the reason why, and that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because this is hard. This is really hard for me to, to expose myself. Yeah. <sighs> That's nice. It's just starting to come together a little bit. Let me do a couple more of these little th things. Okay. All right. Listen, listen. I think I should do even more. Oh shit! I'm my stupid heads away. Well, can I just say the colors suck on your screen? I'm just gonna change. I'm gonna bring the color saturation up a bit because it's much nicer than what I'm looking at than what you see. So I'm gonna bring it 51. Okay, is that, is that 50%? 52, 53, 55. Wow, it's terrible. Like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go extreme. I just want to see where, at what point, it starts looking like. Okay, I'm at eighty percent higher, and that's that is definitely close. That's more like what I'm looking at. Is that, oh, so the camera the whole time was was very diluting the image, but even still, it actually looks so much nicer here. Anyhow, okay. She, thank you for this paint. Oh, my pleasure. So great. I found some of my son's artwork from when he was six or seven. He made his own Pokemon cards, and I'm not going to frame them for Christmas. Nice. Enjoy watching paint. Hey, Sharp. Sorry, I think the thing was the, the Facebook thing was scrolled down, so I missed your messages there. Okay. Let's make let's just blast here. Let's blast the color here. Not only should I, I should switch colors up a bit. So it says that it's, do I have any orange? Oh, I know there's an orange. This is my orange. This is all I've got left. 
So if I stick, because it's all it's already become hard, but if I stick it in there, shove it in, this is all like hard and crusty. This will be the end of this orange. Bye, orange. I really liked you. You were awesome. It's actually very similar to that. Yeah, this is almost like the little dots of, well, that's kind of pretty. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's beautiful. Holy shit, that's nice. Okay, let's do some more of that then. Oh, that's very orange. Okay, this one over there. Maybe I'll bring some. So where I like to do, where I'm placing the paint is partially related to um, covering up mistakes. Like there, like that. Well, that's kind of nice. Should I do more of this orange? It's pretty cool. This is almost like, it's like the tops of these uh, trees are, didn't fall. <sighs> Maybe I'll do more little paintings. I just like sitting down. This is so much more enjoyable. And I think probably the biggest part is I can I can control myself so much better by putting my hand on my resting my one arm on the other. It gives me like five times the control as it does when I'm standing up. I think that's why so many of the, the paintings that I've been standing up are they're always rougher, is because uh I don't I don't I don't use that stick. I never really have actually the balance stick. I don't know what it's even called. Okay, that's cool. Let's bring some different, like a yellow orange. I think a yellow orange would be nice. Uh, I've, I know I've blown past through the um, one hour mark. That was a, so I think. Uh, this is also this yellow's a little is almost gone. You know what? I need some more. Oh, man. I want to keep on going, but I'm starting to feel a little tired. That kind of episode can, is that a little episode that happened? I don't know, about half an hour. That happens to me f like all the time. And it's part of one of the reasons why I stop paying sometimes because I just, it's embarrassing. Okay, I don't know. That's that's not a good color. It didn't even show up as yellow. Yeah. Come on, I need some real yellow. <clears throat> that red really just blasts out that yellow. Is there a hair in there? Yeah, there's a hair. Oh, come on. Where's the yellow? No. Yeah, properly. <laughs> Come. I love doing this. This is fun. Oh, you son of a gun, fucker. There's a little bit too much water. So every once in a while, I screw up. Just put a little, let the tip of the Kleenex just absorb it. There we go. What are we doing for time? 2.30. All right, good. Still got some time. Come on, it's still too orange. I want really blasting yellows. Come on, really? Okay, you want to fuck with me? 
I'll give you a different paintbrush then. How about that? Look at this. Okay, that's a paintbrush I need. Yeah, this one is good. Because I can just basically drop little color bombs down. Look at that. That's kind of what I was trying to get at. Where is it going to be? It's going to be over here, maybe. Maybe over here. Oh, <laughs> this is the brush that always falls off. See, look at that. That color is nice. Little color bombs. Yeah, let's make some patterns. Let's make some a little bit of... Oh, come on, man, really? I need some, like, pliers to squish the metal. Come on. Is it starting to fall off again? Oh, I don't like that. That kind of, that's not good. I'm going to fix that up. I'm going to put some green up. I'm going to cover that up with green. I don't like that. Uh... I think the yellow will be good along the bottom. Maybe even like kind of like a, a white might be interesting. Yeah, let's try let's try a, a white orange. Yeah, that's cool. Watch this. Whoa! Look at this. Oh, that's really fucking awesome. Whoa, what the hell? I don't know what this, stuff, this thing is, but it's intense. Whoa, that's fucking awesome. Just, I wonder if I should do like a halo effect around this person. I've totally ignored the person, haven't I? Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. See, this is when it comes out. Now it starts, little bits of magic start happening now. I'll bring it over here. So it's almost like you're getting this view of this, like, this, like sunlight's coming down. It's hitting this space. Okay. Now, okay, I need to do more work on, on all these branches. I got to put different, like, blues down. This is this paintbrush I've had for so long. This is what Nugget does. She drops. You can go get it. <coughs> go get it. This brush. Good girl. Oh, excuse me. Okay. I don't even know why I keep this brush. I guess because I like the... Uh, Woo, woo, baby! I love the the hairs on this brush, but it always this tip falls off. Here's what he, I'm, I'm gonna seize again. This is what I gotta do. Uh, ah, I need pliers to do that. Okay, so let's get some. Uh, oh, what color is this? Not sure, but let's just let's click this. Oh, no, blue is better, but a blue so you can just sort of peek through. Ah, oh, you god fucker, son of a... It's not working. Ah. 
What should we do? What should we do? Oh, come on, man. Why are you doing this to me? Don't make it so dark. Okay, this thing is just not... That paintbrush is not doing what it's supposed to. Uh, I can't do the fine work right now. I need to do the fine work. See, this brush is just not pulling the paint off. What in the hell? It's got to be the right mixture of water. I think I need. To, there's a whole bunch of more work I gotta do in this. This is. It's not. Uh, it's not. Um, there's still more I want to do. I'm getting close to taking a break. <sighs> oh, I didn't even touch this red. This red might or this. Uh, what is this color? It's like a reddish violet sort. Let's see what happens if I add it to this thing. I think that's important to get. It. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's make these ones reddish because they're at a different depth than you know. It's okay. Um, that's important. Is to, I, I, that's a little trick is to try doing different colors. For I definitely need some um, more. Oh yeah, see that big branch went across is terrible. It needs work. This this thing here needs work. Like why can't these? Ah, shit balls. Come on, come on. I think this one should be darker in front. That was a mistake to do this. Oh, I don't like how blue that is. Maybe brown. Yeah, this is not, uh, uh, there's something bugging me about this thing, this painting. Oh, come on. Okay, maybe I should do something with this person here. I don't want to get, I don't want a hat. They look like they have a hat on. What if I... Uh... Give them a bit of a form.
Um, yeah, I gotta fix this up right here. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> oh, shit. Yeah, it still needs a need some work. I just I'm not quite sure. Okay, now for this weird person thing.
That's not good. Uh, yeah, pull that nose again. Honk, 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 honk. Who are you, you mysterious <coughs> person? Who are you? And what are you doing out here in the forest? What are you doing out here? Oops. 
I don't like that. I don't like how that's so. I think it'd be cool that yeah I think I need to put lightness around around the character I think that's kind of a good idea Head is kind of weird. I'm gonna fix that. Or the shoulder, or whatever the hell this thing is. Let's go. Oop. Ah, crap. I'm gonna be darker. Almost black. I'm gonna take this brown here and just go. Excuse me. Hmm, not quite sure. Well, Bring this down a bit. <sighs> okay. Um. Something's not quite right about this little creature. Some more green.
Something like that. That's kind of bugging me. Something. <coughs> Sorry, nugget. I think I'm going to take a break soon. This painting is not done. Still, something, something still kind of. Something, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's something kind of. Oh, shit balls. Oops. <sighs> Looks like they're taking a dump. Yeah, my my figure needs to needs to be more mysterious. Right now it's not being mysterious, it's just being silly. All right, let's just take a break. I'm not quite. I, I got to do some more work on this thing. It's a good, yeah. I like it. the lines could be maybe nicer. Little characters. All right. All right. I think that's good enough for now. See ya. Hey, end video. Come on. End video. End.